Well, I cannot promise anything. Uh, you see the same face, the same speaker, because Graeme Poston is, uh, is not here, and I will give his lecture, and I promise thereafter I will leave my luggage is already ready there, uh, but uh, I will have some time to visit uh, your capital, Tallinn, this afternoon. So, quality assurance, centralization, and outcomes in complex cancer surgery. It's a topic which is uh, also discussed here and uh, very important for the outcome of surgery and of the, for the cancer patients. Drivers for improvement, our population, as indicated earlier, is getting older, more comorbidities. Age is the greatest etiological factor for disease in Western society. We have no good registries on the comorbidities of these patients and the likelihood of benefit of also adjuvant treatments because a lot of trials have age limits, especially all limits for comorbidities. Healthcare inflation is 5% per year. Patient expectation increases year on year, on year and there's a loss of medical manpower and there's an impact both in the UK as well as in my country on the European uh, working time directive, which is in my country 48 hours. Can we afford it? This is an old publication in the British Medical Journal of McArdle, where there was an evaluation of 13 consultant rectal cancer surgeons and indicating the surgeon as a prognostic factor. An enormous variation in curative resection, anastomotic leakage, post-op mortality, local recurrence, and five-year survival, all surgeon-dependent. And his conclusion was, some surgeons perform less than optimal surgery, some are less competent technically than their colleagues, and some fail to supervise surgeons in training adequately. If by more meticulous attention to detail, the results of surgery could be improved, and our results suggest that this would not be difficult, the impact on survival might be greater than that of any of the adjuvant therapies currently under study. And I demonstrated that a number of trials did not indicate any benefit of adjuvant chemotherapy and rectal cancer. So the traditional definition of quality assurance is the complete set of systematic actions that is required to achieve a treatment result that meets a certain standard. Clinical effectiveness, Quality of care is delivered according to the best evidence of clinical effectiveness, in improving an individual health outcome, safety, delivered so as to avoid all avoidable harm and risk to the individual's safety. And then also, new coming is the patient experience with the so-called PROMS, the patient recorded outcome, is the quality of care which looks to give the individual as positive an experience of receiving and recovering from the care as possible, including being treated according to what individual wants or needs, and with compassion, dignity, and respect. We have introduced in the Netherlands uh, uh, dedicated uh, nurses for colorectal, for breast, and these nurse specialists are very important also for this patient experience. So the deficient is clinical effectiveness, patient experience, and patient safety in order to aim the highest quality of care. So quality assurance and quality improvement. Improvement is supports immediate positive changes in delivering quality. The compliance with standard uses standards as a basis for defining quality improved practice. Data to compare actual with standards, data used to drive improvements to achieve best practice, so you have to give feedback. Actions intended to remedy variations from standard, actions involve changing processes or systems to deliver improved practice, and repeated data coll collection required is continuously important that you get these data so that you know how, uh, how well you perform. We have the so-called dashboard improvement that you can see on the dashboard how you are in related to other hospitals. So quality assurance is an assessment of quality of care by external body, often in terms of comparison against agreed threshold standards to determine whether the quality of care is acceptable. The judgment leads to further discussion as to whether and where corrective actions are required to maintain or improve quality. Quality assurance also ensures that these actions are implemented through monitoring and review of process. 
So issues of quality assurance is how is the multidisciplinary team working, surgical techniques, quality standard, center and volume surgeon, centralization, clinical trials, commission complex cancer surgery, and measuring outcomes. The multidisciplinary team with basis is surgeons, radiologists, radiation oncologists, pathologists, and medical oncologists. In my country, always the nurse specialist participates, usually also present the cases, but a number of other uh, specialities like genetists uh, uh, will participate. It was controversial when first promoted. Good evidence now exists that demonstrates overall long-term benefits but is it really necessary, not only in T1, but also in pre-invasive breast cancer, for instance, and legal requirements for all cancer patient management in many European countries? In my country, it is mandatory, and you will have uh, more or less a punishment when a patient is not discussed and has no report of a multidisciplinary team meeting. But this is the case for almost 100% of cases. There's little high quality supportive evidence of the efficacy until recently. Uh, I will give some dem uh, demonstration thereafter. Uh, what is the discordance of multidisciplinary team decisions made and actions taken? And the reason for discordance, is it unknown morbidity? Is it patient choice, inadequate information, etc.? So here is an example of 149 consecutive cancer cases at Roswell Park, that's uh, in the US. Reason for discussion was mainly because of progression of metastasis and uh, change in management of the multidisciplinary team was here in 36 uh, uh, percent and uh, a certain management one was already there in 84 percent. So there's a meta-analysis published in 2015 on, on outcomes of MDTs, 51 papers identified, and better cancer outcomes were identified with colorectal head and neck, breast, esophageal, and lung, in association with better clinical diagnostic and decision-making. So MDTs result in better patient care and survival outcome was the conclusion of these papers improved consistency of decision-making and delivering of treatment, better continuity, coordination, and cost-effectiveness of care, optimal, appropriate, and standardized decision-making on diagnosis, follow-up, and patient support, and reduced overall referrals, intervention, length of stay, operative morbidity, and mortality. I usually also explain to my patient when they ask, maybe I should have a second opinion, which is, by the way, relatively rare in the Netherlands, that I can explain that already 10 uh, people have been involved in the decision-making of your treatment plan. So it's not my decision alone, it is a team decision. So already you have the opinion of many others. Non-adherence to MDT oh, decisions is results in trends to its lower survival in lung cancer and reasons uh, more or less what has previously been discussed. So impact of multidisciplinary team working on the management of colorectal cancer, same center multidisciplinary management has benefits over multi-center referent management in reduced interventions, shorter length of stay, shorter delays in delivering care, better and more appropriate use of chemoradiation uh, therapy and chemotherapy decreased operative morbidity and mortality. Specialist stage four, so metastatic colorectal MDT outcomes are superior to genetic colorectal cancer MDTs, and that is where uh, Graham Poston as a liver surgeon has a, a more detailed information. So here, see overall survival of patients in the UK diagnosed with colorectal cancer between 1998 and 2004, according to stage of diagnosis. And here you can see overall, which is pretty good, 50%. Here is liver resection, so it's even a bit better. Stage 3 with no liver resection. And here is stage four with no liver resection, the most significant. Uh, and of course, we have to strive that when patients have stage four, they must be identified when a liver resection is possible or not. Landmark analysis for stage four. 
Here you see, again, stage four, no liver resection versus stage four with a liver resection. So it is at least a 20% survival benefit. And of course, the liver resection cases have a good chance of long-term survival. Here, another publication from the British Journal of Surgery, use of liver resection in England for metastatic colorectal cancer, hospital by hospital analysis. So a huge difference between the use of liver resection, and that is the problem more in the, in the UK, but it has been a problem all over the world that liver metastasis are, uh, patients with liver metastasis m many times miss the chance of a curative liver resection. So a thousand percent difference between the worst and the best performing hospital. And this is more or less uh, indicating the, the same. Here, a decision-making process, patient treated with palliative chemotherapy, discussed and not discussed, radiology report and imaging requested. Then only 18 of these 110 patients had multiple sites, but 55 had liver only. And then, of course, these patients should be evaluated for a liver resection. Imaging reviewed here by seven liver surgeons, in this is an each patient, was scored easily resectable, complex, borderline, irresectable, or unable to comment on scan. And here you can see that uh, the expert opinions on resectability, 55% change in decision from non-resectable to resectable or borderline resectable, and borderline resectable usually then leads to the chemotherapy in order to, cave, uh, to, to change the, the situation into resectability. So that is dr dramatic, an expert team, 55% change in the decision, and here only 10% complete concordance between experts and non-experts. So you need ex expert decision, and you need a high-volume center with uh, not only surgeons, but also expert radiologists involved. A significant number of treatment decision was based off inadequate scans that were too poor to interpret accurately. And indeed, our liver uh, team um, weekly meeting, uh, more than half of the patient have to have repeat examinations in order to examine it accurately. In the UK, there is NICE. I thought it was N National Institute for Clinical Excellence, but they hear it is Health and Care Excellence, which gives guidelines and also checks if guidelines are uh, followed. And this on imaging of hepatic metastasis, if the CT scan shows metastatic disease only in the liver, patient has no contraindication to further treatment, a specialist, HPB, uh, a MDT should decide if further imaging to confirm surgery is suitable for the patient or potential suitable after further treatment is needed. Here you see this is a, a study I performed once. I mentioned that in the early 90s, our local recurrence rate in the Netherlands and also in Norway was extremely high. Uh, in the Norway, uh, they started a, a program of instruction of surgeons and I was part of that. In the Netherlands, I started the uh, so-called TME trial. We made a comparison with Warren Anker, Memorial Sloan Kettering, Yoshi Moria from the, UK, from the National Cancer Center in Tokyo, and Bill Heald uh, from the UK, uh, very high volume expert surgeons with invariable use of radiation therapy and radiation therapy, but all with a technical expertise and you can see they all had recurrence rate below 10%. And this was the results by Arne Wiebe of this instruction program to introduce TME in Norway. Local recurrence went down from uh, almost 30% uh, to below 10%, and also five-year survival increased. And here you can see, I showed you the graph before, also in the Netherlands there was an enormous decrease in local recurrence rate. And Peculiar was that in five years' time of the TME trial, we improved survival of rectal cancer by some 10%. There was 3% improvement of survival of colon cancer by the introduction of adjuvant chemotherapy in uh, lymph node-positive colon cancer. But as a result of the quality control in rectal cancer, the prognosis and survival 
of the patient with rectal cancer was better than with colon cancer because of all the attention to quality control and giving feedback to uh, surgeons and teams. So quality standards, what are they? A quality standard is a set of specific, concise statements that act as a marker of high quality, cost-effective patient care across a pathway, derived from the best available elements, such in the UK you have the NICE guidance, and are produced collaboratively along with partners, service users, and carers. What is the purpose? To make it clear that high-quality care is by providing definitions of clinical and cost-effective care, to support benchmarking of performance, to provide information to patients, carers, and the public about the quality of care they can expect. And here you have the quality standards, statement six, people with a CT scan of chest, abdomen, and pelvis suggesting liver metastatic colorectal cancer have their scans reviewed by an HPB team to decide further where imaging is needed to confirm suitability for surgery. And it's incorporated in contracts and failure to comply will result in financial pen penalties. In the Netherlands, we have set volume standards with all the societies, so not only the surgeons, radiation oncologists, and medical oncologists, as the professional organization in consultation with the Ministry of Health and the insurance companies, when there's no compliance, so when a surgeon or a hospital treats less than 50 rectal cancer, which is the minimal requirement, they will not get reimbursement in the coming years. So the board of directors will go to the team and say, either you uh, will improve in having the patients, or you have to stop and refer all your patients elsewhere. So when there is no change of practice at all, and the same is with auditing, when you're well out of the uh, uh, range of complications or morbidity and mortality, you will get a visit to the hospital. What kind of implications have been made in order to improve that? If the same results is next year, you will have a problem. And this will be notified and also in the public that uh, this hospital is not compliant with the current standards. By the way, uh, coming week in the Netherlands, there will be a popular magazine, The Best Hospitals of the Netherlands, ranking all the hospitals, and that has nothing to do with the real quality. It has more to do with the quality of the parking facilities and the coffee than of the quality of surgery and the outcome. But it's still, and every, everybody likes it, that it, it comes out. So, volumes. Patients can often improve their chances of survival substantially, even at high-volume hospitals, by selecting surgeons who perform the operations frequently. And many publications were there in the New England Journal of Medicine of John Bergmeier. And here you can see detailed activity analysis for liver resections performed by 305 surgeons in the UK. And of course, there's a huge difference in the number of hepatectomies performed, and this is the worrisome part, of course. Because what you see here, that 154 performed only one resection, 82 performed two resections, so uh, this is the worrisome, very low volume surgery. And here you can see, with the detailed activity analysis, this, the general surgeon operative mortality is 4%, and the specialized surgeon has 1%. And it's not only operative mortality, but usually also hospital stay, uh, comorbidities, etc. So it makes a difference, in, uh, especially also as de demonstrated here in the B BGS for liver surgery. But the same is true in colorectal cancer. This is a publication of Lars Palman impact of hospital volume on the outcome, and also uh, there were publications on the long-term survival. Here, the uh, uh, operative mortality, when it is below 25, it immediately goes up with a factor four. So, again, in the Netherlands, we have set the standard for 150 colorectal cases and 50 for rectal cancer. And uh, this is again a publication from uh, John Bergmeier on the relationship of surgeon volume on high volume op in operative mortality, cystectomy, lung resections, pancreatic resection, but especially in esophagectomy. Uh, but uh, and so the uh, high 
operative mortality and is in low volume hospitals is 16 percent but the conclusion of this paper is you need to perform 10 esophagectomies per year which is relatively low as you i demonstrated that when you perform more than 40 per year your operative mortality is significant lower than when you operate on 20 per year and uh, here again pancreatic duodenectomy uh, annals of surgery uh, every time when uh, you can see more than 24 indicating every year on that is the lowest mortality and the lowest morbidity. Same here uh, from a publication of Murray Brennan and Human Fung from the Memorial Sloan Kettering, high volume and low volume hospitals uh, and this is for pancreatic resection for cancer. So initial an enormous difference which is more or less the same, and it has all to do with operative morbidity and mortality. And here, five-year conditional survival comparing patients undergoing highest and lowest volume for many uh, tumors, and for esophagus, liver, pancreas, rectal, and stomach, it's all significant. Billy Moria uh, of the American College of Surgeons and JCO. Commissioning high-quality surgery, that's an initiative in the UK, an English National Cancer Plan Improving Outcome Guidance, first published in 2001, relates to the management of all common cancer, specifies core membership of each MDT, common cancer managed by every general hospital, and that's uh, breast, uh, primary colorectal skin, and complex cancer surgery, lung, esophagus, stomach, pancreas, liver, bladder, sarcoma, centralized to regional centers, updated in 2013 for HPB. And it's all fine, uh, you can find it all on the internet. So the updated HPB plan, key clinical indicators measured against documented incidents, number of cases with confirmed histology, number of patients having resection, one, two, and five year survival rate. And then there's also the initiative AUGUS, the Association of Upper GI Surgeons of Great Britain and Ireland, provision of specialized HPB surgical services, uh, minimum volume requirements, uh, annual liver volume here, 10 to 50 major resections, a minimum center is 75 major resections, and 25 of 197 English hospitals reimbursed for HPB surgery. So, of course, financial measures will have an influence on this as well, but it should be very well case-mixed control because a number of these audits in the UK are in the public domain, so you can find not only uh, on the hospital, but even on the surgeon's name, morbidity and mortality figures, and this already led in the UK to uh, uh, court uh, sessions because the surgeon said, well, I have three times the operative mortality, but also many more patients with comorbidities referred to me. Uh, so you have to be very careful to put it in the open. In the Netherlands, it is not in the open, so it is per hospital. You can identify it yourself in the dashboard. You can identify your hospital yourself, but you will never know who the hospitals or other surgeons are. So comparative outcome, audit of outcomes is top-down, numerated based with registry of data. Of course, you must have good registries and bottom-up denominated based population data. The basic concept of registries is an outcome registry, concurrent assessment of structure and process of care, with site visits, analysis aimed at identifying best practices, broad implementation of such uh, practices, and outcome tracking to confirm improvement. So it's not only based on identifying the poorest outcome, but also the best outcomes to learn how can we improve further. And this is a slide from uh, my clinical trials, the logistics I had in the clinical trials. I have uh, my own data center, and uh, the data center has contact with local surgeons, with uh, local data managers, with the radiation therapist this, and the pathologist. This is the TME trial. And also give feedback to uh, both the local surgeon and the instructor surgeon how well they perform and how they can improve. And this works very well. We, so we had always surgeons 
outside surgeon in the operating theater. They learned a lot of other techniques within the study of the TME trial. Abdominal perineal resection rate went from 48% to 27%. That was not the aim of the study because of the good collaboration between surgeons. They learned better to make low anastomosis and, uh, and uh, also the in-hospital stay decreased therefore. Here you can see metastatic colorectal cancer treated at MD Anderson and the Mayo Clinic by year of diagnosis and overall survival. And you see an improvement every year uh, over the period from 1990 up to 2006. But also in 1990, it cost 10,000. 2010, 100,000 for this improvement. And in 2015, 200,000. Because the patients not only benefit from more surgery, but also from more chemotherapy and more costly chemotherapy. So can we afford it in the long term? Metastatic colorectal cancer is now becoming a chronic condition rather than a terminal illness. These patients are now becoming very expensive to treat if we're going to achieve long-term survival like this, regardless of disease-free status. We do not know the ideal treatment sequence and strategy to achieve optimal survival. So there are a number of studies, and especially this is something from Graham Poston with the SO and EORTC, a prospective colorectal liver metastasis database with an integrated quality assurance program that is on uh, patients who are initially were irresectable, then become ir ir resectable, and before resection, they should be put into a database. I often refer for these kind of analysis also to a so-called Bernard-Norlanger study, a study regarded by the medical oncology uh, community very positive, and by the surgical community very negative. It is a study to demonstrate in resectable liver metastasis, whether chemotherapy improves survival. Published twice in the New England Journal, so it's four courses pre versus end four courses post-operative of Folfox versus surgery alone. And indeed, disease-free survival is significantly better in those who had chemotherapy. It's a difference of six months. Overall survival is the same. So patients who had eight months of very demanding chemotherapy with all the sensibility lost and side effects have the same survival prognosis as those who had surgery alone. So I consider that a negative study, but because of this in the graph, medical oncology regards it as a positive study. So in the Netherlands, we decided this is not standard of care, but many European countries have adopted this as a standard of care. So this is a prospective database uh, initiated by the European Society of Surgical Oncology. Can we compare outcomes? And that's the QUIP uh, initiative, Quality Innovation, Productivity and Prevention for HPB Surgery, a universal enhanced recovery program reimburse for maximum five days in patient stay after liver resection and 12 days for pancreatic resection, procurement of both drugs and devices, and uh, use of cross-matching and blood transfusion. The Commission of Quality and Innovation, two years to implement, capacity planning, do not necessarily duplicate services, set national tariff for reimbursement and performance monitoring and quality dashboards. That's what I talked about, that you have an easy dashboard to see how you perform. The recommendations are, and this is for the UK, centers of excellence in an ideal world, the best for procedures which are uncommon, high risk, expensive, have wide variation in outcome, delivery of care closer to home by appropriate trade surgeons working in cancer networks, multidisciplinary team meetings pre and post operatively, outcome-based quality improvement, greater promise for really improving quality, but will require major investments. In the Netherlands, my hospital has video conferencing with 12 hospitals in the neighborhood, especially for the more difficult cases. So in conclusion, quality assurance is mandatory. Multidisciplinary working improves outcome. Centralization increase vol increases volumes. Increased center and surgeon volumes improve 
outcomes. Quality standards can be set and outcomes can be measured and compared. And especially this feedback to the centers helps you to improve and perform better. Thank you very much for your kind attention.